New comic day is just around the corner. Here are my top 10 most anticipated comics. Hey comic fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you Spider Slayer's top 10 most anticipated comics of the week. And guys, this is for the week of uh, 1.30, 2019. Now, if you're not familiar with this series, guys, it's pretty straightforward, right? These are my top 10 most anticipated comics of the week. And guys, this premieres every Sunday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then hopefully on Friday, Fridays at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you guys get to check in on the results of this book if they actually met my expectations. So I want to appreciate all you guys that are tuning in to watch this video series. It's greatly appreciated. Guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that important notification button so you don't miss a single video from me. All right, with that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's get started with this week's top 10 most anticipated comics. All right, so coming in guys, now I've been doing a little segment called On the Fence and I've been searching for a, a better title or a better, better name for this little segment and I decided to change it and I'm going to call it On the Hot Seat. That's right. So these are the comics that are actually on the hot seat. There's two of them. They're in danger of being dropped, okay? Because I'm just not happy with them and I was underwhelmed to buy another one. So the first one goes to Action Comics issue 1007. I just am not a fan of Bandis, Bendis writing both of these Superman titles. I like it better in Superman than I do in action. And this time around, there's this Cobra cult conspiracy that is is uh, like kind of captures Jimmy Olsen in this issue. I don't know. It doesn't interest me, right? The whole underground thing. It's just not my style Superman. Maybe Superman was like that back in the day, uh, early in the day, but it's just, I don't like that style of Superman. I just prefer the one where he's like in space or battling other people or what, whatever the case may be, but just not my cup of tea. And uh, this is really getting close for me being dropped. It's just really hard because I've been, same thing like Batman and all these other Superman books. Like I've been reading these books since, you know, New 52. So it would be hard for me to drop, but it's, it's just not catching my interest right now. All right. And then the next book that's on the hot seat is actually X-Force issue two. Um, issue one just wasn't rememberable. Like when X-Force two came out and I saw this, I'm like, I don't even remember what the hell happened in issue one. But I know like Cable had to rescue Deathlock and there's this, I don't know, they were being chased around and stuff like that. And it just, it, there was no like real character development. It didn't capture my attention. It just wasn't a very memorable issue number one. So I'm going to go back, see how issue two comes out maybe. And then, you know, make a decision if this book is going to be continued to be pulled going forward. All right. So those are my hot seat books. Now let's start with number 10. And number 10, guys, goes to Batgirl, issue 31. This book is $3.99 right now. And uh, I thought that the beginning of the story arc is not as strong as the last story arc. You know, Barbara was suffering through some back issues because her implant was messed up. She had trouble walking. And I loved seeing her going through those struggles. And I, I kind of would have loved to see that a little bit more. But now this is really about a battle between her and her father because Barbara volunteers to campaign for an upcoming um, uh, candidate who wants to take over the GCPD. And, uh, but, and it puts Babs in kind of a, a rough situation because she's trying to help this person, but her dad is against this person. And she's kind of caught in the middle of the situation. And uh, yeah, so it makes for some tough times. I think it makes it for like more of a really political type of book. Um, the last issue was very dialogue heavy and it, it took a long time to get its point across of what was trying to explain. Not as enough 
not enough action as I would like it. But, you know, we'll see where it goes. I love the artwork in this series. It looks really nice. So we'll see what happens going forward with this story arc. All right. So coming in at number nine. And this goes to Ms. Marvel, issue 37. This is actually a book that I am picking up again. I have not picked it up in a long time. But I want to pick it up before the new creative team jumps on. I want to see what uh, G. Jilla Wilson does with this book how she concludes it and supposedly this is a uh kind of a key issue because she kind of collides with her uh with her future kamala khan does and so um i'm kind of interested to see what happens with this book i really loved the series when it first came out i felt like it dropped off my big thing with Ms. Marvel is she's a really strong character. I love her personality. She had a great supporting cast. And her supporting cast wasn't integral as it once was. And then the villains are not, you know, memorable villains. And I feel like the villains in the book kind of make up the character. We all know that. Great villains make great heroes. So um, it just wasn't as strong for me. I love her in Champions. Again, I think she's an overall solid character, but the series has been lacking. But I'm very curious to see what a new creative team will do with this book going forward. So I feel like this could be a good jumping on point towards the end of this creative team. All right. So moving on to number eight. And number eight, guys, goes to Uncanny X-Men 3d issue one that's right guys are you like mind blown right now you're like 3d no way that's freaking cool or are you like really mike you're buying a reprint of issue 268 that just comes with a you know 3d glasses you know it's not like we haven't had those before you're right we've had 3d comics before but we haven't had them in a really long time right the last one i got was like in uh gen 13 issue that was uh was 3d i remember seeing that one i wound up getting that one and that was cool because it's Jay got Jay scott Nick campbell artwork but this is a cool one because it's got black widow it's got uh captain america it's got wolverine i have the original issue and it'll be cool to get this 3d issue i just want to see what it looks like in 3d with this cool artwork and, and, and things like that and it just brings back the old nostalgia days of x-men and why not look at it in 3d man that's some cool shit right there if somehow i can make a video of me wearing the glasses and and doing like a 3d video of what it might look like i don't know maybe i'll try that i'll, I'll just experiment with it but um i think it's cool i like it i'm excited for it that's why it was number eight on my list it's pretty sad that it's ahead of two other books and this is just a reprint right all right so moving on to number seven and this week's most anticipated book for number seven goes to heroes in crisis issue five also a 399 book and um i feel like this story has been on a little bit of a stall this is a very controversial story i think a lot of people either really love this book by tom king or they really hate this book uh by tom king uh but the one thing that we can probably all agree on is clayman's artwork it's been stellar in this book um and it got a lot of heat too especially in the last issue with um Babs showing her backside and things like that and I think people are looking way too much into certain things it's just the way the man draws you know um and it's it, it it's more realistic uh, it, that's the way you got to look at it you know it, these superheroes are fit they're going to wear the spandex it's just the way they they look okay um it wasn't over exaggerated artwork I know people thought said that and it's not at all um, but I think the artwork looks good. I didn't think nothing of it when I saw that scene. I can't believe the amount of attention that received there. You know, give this story more attention when it comes to the, to the um, you know, the story. Talk about the story more there. Okay, but anyway, um, I'm excited for this one. Uh, the AI in the Sanctuary has been leaked. So it's, it's going everywhere. Um, things are exposed. Um, you know, and so... 
and they're trying to still figure out this murder. So it's very interesting to see how this information is going to affect the DC universe and whatnot, how their secrets will be exposed. And let's see if they can find this murder already, right? I, I do need to see more progression with this story. That's why it's lower on my list. I don't feel like it's a horrible story, but it's a very slow burn type of story. And, and we could have gotten more progression at this point in time because we're on issue five with it already. All right, so moving on to my number six most anticipated book. And this goes to Dead Man Logan, issue three. A uh, solid series. I like this book as well. Um, I like the reason, you know, that Mysterio is in here, an old-time Spider-Man villain, um, you know, and uh, Old Man Logan is going after Mysterio to try to stop, uh, you know, possibly what could happen he could possibly stop Mysterio from doing the same thing that happened in his Earth or his timeline to having people being killed, you know. And uh, I think that makes for a very interesting story. There's great characters in there. Like I said, Miss Sinister's in there. Um, we have Neo Hydra in there. We have Red Skull's Daughter Sins in there. So it's a fun story. I like it. I think this is probably one of the better Wolverine stories out there right now it's much better than you know return wolverine and all that and it will be curious to see you know does old man lugan truly die at the end of this whole thing because he's dying from adamantium poisoning so that was my number six now let's go on to the top five and my number five most anticipated book goes to batman beyond issue 29 also three dollars and 99 cents and uh, I think this is the final part to this story arc where it has to do with the return of the Joker. And the Joker prepares to deliver the final blow to Terry McGinnis's brother, Matt. He's going to try to pull this Jason Todd on him, okay? And uh, it's kind of weird because you get to see um, Joker like a robot but it's not really a joker he put one of his people from his gang he made him into a robot now he's going to go after people a very weird cliffhanger remind me of something from the 90s but um it, it, it makes for a great story uh booth does the artwork in this series it's a lot of fun um you know it just brings back those old days of batman beyond terry mcginnis bruce wayne i loved it and i've said it before but that intro to batman beyond the animated series is just the best intro ever man i always rock into that intro but really cool book i'm loving it right now can't wait and to see what happens after this story arc going forward with the series all right so moving on to number four and number four goes to west coast avengers issue seven this is a 399 book as well and guess who returns to the marvel universe to meet up with katie bishop well it's none other than marvel boy and those two used to date so there's going to be some kind of um craziness going on in that issue right um you know and also katie bishop dates um what's his name Fuse, okay, and so he's a new character in this book, new person on this team, still trying to learn the ropes and whatnot. So that can make for an interesting relationship type of issue. The overall series is pretty good as well. I think Kelly Thompson does a nice job at writing it, and what she does a good job as as a writer is the relationships. And I think for her writing a team book, I think she does it really well. And her writing style. She's been pairing off these characters, uh, working together, so you get to know kind of the inner workings of these characters to get to know them better, and then slowly forming them and getting this cohesiveness as a solid team. Um, Quentin Quire is hilarious. Gwenpool is hilarious in this book. Um, you know, some of the other characters are really, really good as well. The artwork is solid. The cover of this book is cool. Kind of reminds me of something like from Star Wars, from the original Star Wars poster. We see Luke holding the uh, actual lightsaber and then Leia's beneath him, but this is kind of like Katie Bishop's beneath him. So it's kind of cool. I like it. So I'm really enjoying this series. I think it's under a radar series. I don't think a lot of people read it. I think it's possibly in jeopardy of maybe getting canceled if it doesn't you know, improve on its numbers soon, but I think it's a solid book. I'm really enjoying it right now. 
All right. So now we're in our top three. And my number three most anticipated book goes to probably my favorite team book in all of all comics right now. And that goes to Teen Titans Annual. This is 48 pages for $4.99. It's a very solid book. Um, Damien is hunting down Jason Todd because Jason Todd betrayed their working relationship with each other. And uh, there's a first appearance in here that happens. And the character that makes his appearance in this book is by the name of Joystick. And Joystick is from Teen Titans Go. So if you're looking, if you're a speculation type of person and you're looking to get a first appearance, this is the book to pick up because we've gotten a lot of new characters in there in this book as of recently. We've had, you know, Crush, Lobo's daughter. We've had Roundhouse, you know, and so now we're getting Joystick here. So very, very cool to see these characters make their way into the DC Universe through this series. And then also, um, we get to possibly learn about more of Dejin's secrets. And she is the type of uh, genie she's like a cross between uh starfire and um <clears throat> who'd i say it was and raven so she's very mysterious character we don't know too much about her but the, you know what's great about this series as the series has been going along it tells its story but unravels the hidden, the mystery of the characters as it goes and it's such beautifully flown uh the flow of the book is so beautifully done and the artwork is pretty solid as well. So that was my number three. So next, <clears throat> moving on to my number two most anticipated book. And I couldn't find out any information of what this book was about. Um, when I looked up the description, it basically <clears throat> gave me the past story arc about J. Jonah Jameson. But that one ended. So Amazing Spider-Man issue 14 is my number two but I don't know really what the story arc is about. All we know is that we was left on this cliffhanger where Scorpion was getting captured and he wound up getting thrown into this prison cell with a whole bunch of other Spider-Man's villains. So this starts a new story arc. I'm really excited about it. The J. Jonah thing is over. It looks like things are about to get more serious when it comes to Spider-Man here. So really looking forward to it. Can't wait. I hope. My next time around, maybe it'll be my number one. <clears throat> so what is my number one pick of the week? Well, that goes to Detective Comics issue 997. The last issue of Detective Comics was really solid, okay? We wind up getting to see um, this monster that's been killing all of Bruce's people that are close to him. Um, kind of evolve it, it, it like morphs into all these villains and things like that and uh, we, all we know at this moment is it just kills the people closest to him and he's traveling around to figure out you know who sent this creature who's after him we don't know we don't know that's what makes it for such a good mystery and it's like the pure definition of what detective comics is there's these murderers happening and batman has to solve them but along the way there's this great action adventure type of comic book with great artwork and it's solid solid book peter j tomasi is doing such a phenomenal job with it i can't wait till we get to issue 1000 i'm really looking forward to it but who else could possibly die that's closest to Bruce Wayne. This is really affecting him really heavily right now. And uh, his balls are against the walls right now, man. So I can't wait to see what happens with this series. So that is my number one book of the week. So there you guys have it. There are my top 10 most anticipated comics of the week. Hopefully, fans, you enjoyed it. Now in the comments below, guys, it's your turn. Put you down your top 10. Put down your top 5. Put down your top 3 or even just put down one anticipated comic of the week because I'm looking forward to hearing your guys' thoughts. And again, fans, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and uh, participating in this series. It really means a lot. And uh, guys, this channel does not work without you. So again, fans... 
Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that important notification button so you don't miss a single video from me. And until that next comic book review, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off and saying thanks for watching, fans. Take care. Bye.